Welcome to the Mount Pleasant Magazine podcast, featuring discussions and interviews about the people, places, and events that make Mount Pleasant such a special place. Hi, this is Roger Gaither, your host for the Mount Pleasant Magazine podcast. In this episode, Bill Mascio, publisher of Mount Pleasant Magazine, chats with the mayor of the town of Mount Pleasant, Will Haney. Now, here are Bill and Will. I am so honored today to have with us on Mount Pleasant Magazine podcast, Will Haney. Uh, he's a, he's running for re-election, and we get a chance to do it up close and personal. I appreciate you being here, Will. Thank you, Bill. I really appreciate it. Um, for years and years, you have really captured the spirit of life in Mount Pleasant, and I appreciate that. How long have you well, been doing this? It's over 30, isn't it? About 30 yeah, years? Yeah, because we had a magazine called East Cooper Magazine that morphed into Mount Pleasant Magazine. But you know, Will... Um, since our town's grown so much, these elections are more important than ever. So before I really get into some issues, may I ask you something personal? Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> that was funny, Will. But what really inspired you the first time to run for mayor? What, 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 ha- you know, what really got to you that you wanted to do that? I'll take it back to 2015 when I first ran for council um, you know, I had a column in the Moultrie News. Um, I had been an opinion columnist uh, for two newspapers in North Carolina and the sailing columnist for the uh, Post and Courier. And then I had an opinion column in the Moultrie News. And when these growth issues were, were getting big, especially the uh, parking garage on Shem Creek and this type of thing that just changed the, the look and feel of our town, my wife, Suzette, who taught at Jenny Moore for many years, um, told me one time, she said, have you ever thought about coming out from behind the keyboard and offering yourself for public office? And I thought, hmm, that was either an inspiration or a challenge. I'm not sure which, but I ran uh, for council in 2015. And um, I just got the feeling that um, it was going to take a change of leadership at mayor to really accomplish the things we need to control growth, to try to fix the traffic issues, which is a long-term project, as everybody knows. Um, and keep the quality of life of Mount Pleasant as we know it. So as a council member, I decided I was going to I was going to run for mayor. And it was a midterm thing for me. If I had lost that race, I would still be on council. I would still have had four years on council. So um, I decided to do it. Um, learned a lot from the 15 campaign for council, applied that to the run for mayor and, and got about 68 percent of the vote. And uh have been honored to serve ever since. Does that mean there's a behind every great man there's a great woman? Greatness aside, it's, it's the love and inspiration and the closeness um, that you feel. And um, I know all the families in, in that part of Mount Pleasant that go to Jenny Moore have known uh, Suzette for years. She was a very highly requested teacher there. And uh, she loves our community and um, yeah, she, did, she loves yes. it enough to, you know, this this is technically a part time job. But ask my wife if this job is part time, not if you do it right. Um, I always said when I was running before, the job may be described as part time, but leadership is full time. There's so many things going on right now in Mount Pleasant you know, because of the growth, the traffic, everything you're saying. But what would you say the most important issues are right now in Mount Pleasant that, that you plan or wrap your mind around and solve some challenges if reelected? Sure. Um, I ran for council and I ran for mayor on controlling growth, which we have done. Uh, We have limited residential growth to 2% per year. Um, It used to be unlimited. Uh, We will now only issue about 750 building permits. Um, I wouldn't mind if that number was lower, and I don't think most of our residents would. Maybe as council, as we get some new council members, we can do that. Uh, protecting our quality of life. I stood behind the uh, the uh, uh, plastics ordinance, which did not ban all plastic bags. As you know, you can get the reusable kinds. But uh, we have an irreplaceable ecosystem around here that feeds that ocean that we all love. But right now, an issue, and th- those are two that I ran on and, and two that I'm, I'm proud of my record. I don't run away from my record on those. But we are in a life and death issue now, and that's the COVID-19 pandemic Nobody foresaw that you know, in 2017, and there are no elected officials who had dealt with a pandemic before we got into this one in March of 2020. So the life and death issues will always come first, and that includes public safety, and that includes getting our first responders paid 
to where it needs to be, which we were in the process of doing when everything had to get put on hold because we had no idea what our budget was going to look like. Nobody ever missed a paycheck. Nobody had uh, a furlough in the town of Mount Pleasant. Now we're going to bump those salaries up to where they ought to be. Everyone's talking about real estate. The conversation continues with Voice for Real Estate podcast. Listen and learn from the experts who call the Carolinas home. Podcast advertising gives your business a voice of authority. Be heard. Advertise on this podcast. Visit voiceforrealestate.com. You're listening to the Mount Pleasant Magazine podcast. I was at the town council meeting when a lot of people got up and talked about the first responders. Not only is it a much needed raise, but it's a very popular first responders need to be taken care of the best we can take care of them. Right. Right. I agree. And I, and I don't want anybody to get the impression that there was a request uh, that was denied by the elected officials at all. Uh, that's why we paid so much money for this study. And that's why we're having this study done from 2019, fast forward to 2021. And it will come to us to vote on in October. And I've let our first responders know I, I stand behind that and, and we will get those raised. The COVID spike um, you were talking about COVID a little earlier. How has that affected the way you're governing and about and how has it affected our community? Affecting our community in that we are seeing a spike now. Um, yesterday, we heard that one of our elementary schools suddenly has to close and go to virtual. That's not saying, hey, we're going to do this on this date. That's saying starting tomorrow, do not come to school and we'll get you, you know, your e-learning packets and all of that. Being married to a career school teacher, I know how tough that is. And I know how that puts our children behind. So, um, you know, first of all, there's, there's the public health uh, issue. There's the, the life and death matter. Second, there's the educational effects of that. And third, and this doesn't trivialize it at all, but this is also a, an economic issue because all of those parents have to stay home with those children now. And that puts a stress on the workplace and puts a stress on the economy. So, um, you know, we, we are seeing a spike. I spoke with the head of East Cooper Hospital yesterday. Um, we are at East Cooper. We're below the uh, inpatient admitted level and the ICU and ventilated level. We were at the spike of last summer. Um, it's not at that level yet, but it is higher than it has been since the spike a year ago. Uh, Roper, you know, has a big presence in Mount Pleasant. They put out their figures yesterday, as does the medical university, and they have put theirs out. The lesson learned in all of this is that those who got the vaccination are much better off and much less likely to spread it. And I'm very proud that as of the end of May, even Mount Pleasant was around 65 percent vaccinated. If you take out the 12 and under who weren't eligible, um, we made national news with our collaborative effort of vaccinating when I called Chick-fil-A to come help us get the traffic through. So Mount Pleasant's been a leader in that. But let's don't stop now. If you're not vaccinated, get that vaccine. If I may give a little plug, we're having a health and wellness expo in November at the Omar Temple, brought right. to you by Health Links Magazine. Yep. And uh, we're giving free COVID shots there. When I was at that same town council meeting, uh, there was a lot going on regarding the uh, Phillips community. Yes. And, um, and, and can you, can you um, elaborate on that? And because that's part of our growth, because we have to maintain that because that's our heritage. What right. are we doing to make sure that happens? Let's be clear. This is not the Highway 41 Phillips community issue. This is the historic district designation. And there was a tract of land out there that has been sold. Uh, and the new buyers asked to A, annex into Mount Pleasant, which in and of itself is usually not a problem. It's what they want for zoning. And that's where if you get zoning and you, and you upzone it to where you can develop it more intensely than the settlement community it's in, that's when we start eviscerating our settlement community. So the town of Mount Pleasant has a zoning called community conservation. This is not natural conservation. This is to conserve the character of all of our settlement communities. Our comprehensive plan calls for certain tracks. If they choose to come into the town, and, and we've got thousands of people that have moved here recently. In South Carolina, a municipality cannot reach out and say, we are annexing you. 
we have to respond to requests to annex in. That's the only way it works in South okay. Carolina. Okay. So, um, so these buyers wanted to annex in and they wanted to become part of the plan development agreement for Park West. And we said, no way that's happening. We're not expanding Park West. It has defined boundaries. The only reason first reading to annex it passed was it would fall under, under our, um, our comprehensive plan. It would become community conservation and would only reflect the Phillips community. So at that time, the county had not passed its historic district designation. So we deferred that vote. They have since passed it. So now there's really no need to annex it into the, the town of Mount Pleasant. We do not make money off annexations. Trust me, we lose money on providing all of those services. So I, for one, and I don't speak for all of council, all of council will have a vote, but at our meeting on the 15th, it will come up and uh, for second reading. And I will say there's no reason to annex this. The Phillips community doesn't want this 19 acre tract to be in the town of Mount Pleasant when a lot of Phillips, the majority of Phillips is not. So do you think the uh, other town council members will support that vision? Yeah, um, I, I think so. Um, I can say this, if they do, if it does get voted to, to be annexed, you won't see any change. It's not going to be annexed to be developed intensely. I think what the Phillips community wants is now that they are a defined historic district, they don't want to have piecemeal government. And you know, we don't either. Piecemeal government is, is hard. The other thing I want to say is, is I proudly supported the um, settlement community task force that council member GM Whitley proposed. And that is our outreach. And we have appointees from all of the settlement communities to talk with the town of Mount Pleasant of how we can get along better, how we could inspire voluntary annexation if they knew we were going to preserve their community. And we have got decades, maybe centuries of mistrust and exclusion to overcome. But once that dialogue has started, which it has, we're on the right track. Well, that was one of my questions. Moving forward, you basically answered that with the settlement communities. That's a really important part of Mount Pleasant, is it not? Absolutely. And that's why we have a sweet grass basket overlay district to protect that. That's why tomorrow I'm meeting with two leaders of our settlement communities uh, to talk about an issue involving one. Um, you know, you can ask George Freeman, Lewis Jefferson, uh, John Wright, uh, just about anybody who's, who's involved in a settlement community, Cheryl German with the Old Village uh, community. Um, I uh, have, they have my ear. I have a relationship with them and I'll meet with them anytime. It, it is part of our heritage and, and that story needs to be told more. Beyond governing. Um, yes. What do you do? Uh, what do you do for the town? I mean, like what would you and, and Suzette, what would you and your wife do um, to, to support the town and different things like that? That, that's a great question. One of the biggest and most meaningful is um, our involvement with Nancy Shipman and Wake Up Carolina. Uh, last night, we had the National Day of Remembrance, and it was declared a day of remembrance uh, for overdose victims in the town of Mount Pleasant. We gathered, if you haven't seen the pictures, that rotunda of our town hall looks beautiful when it's lit up either in patriotic colors or like last night, the purple for remembrance. 259 uh, people in our region, in our area, died last year of an accidental overdose due to op opioids. I, I, I asked Siri what the 259th day of 2021 is. Bill, that is September the 16th. So we lose a person every day of the year in our region from January 1 till September the 16th. And those, those numbers are up. Um, because of that. So we got the Narcan training. It's, it's a nasal spray that will reverse the effects of an opioid. We, we were trained in that, what the law is about that, how you save somebody's life. Um, the Charleston Center uh, trains and treats people uh, for that. Our police department is a prime mover in that. They are one of the leaders in the state. So Suzette and I are very involved in that. And when I spoke last night, uh, we have members of our immediate family who are in recovery. Our lives have been touched by these issues. And so we, we don't try to hide that. It's not our personal st story to tell. It's our family members to tell. And me being a public official, that kind of, you know, could drag them into the spotlight. But, but that is one. 
Um, another that I'm very, very proud of was um, back in December, um, the stress that was on the people in our retirement communities, the workers and the residents who had been isolated for years, our healthcare workers and our hospitality workers who were way behind in their, in their income and everything. We pulled together Operation COVID Christmas. No, no town assets, no town staff. I just got on the phone and got people like Mickey Bask with Feed the Need. And it involved um, our two big hospitals, our 14 retirement centers, uh, uh, East Cooper Community Outreach, Meals on Wheels, Shifa Clinic, um, the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce, and I hope I'm not leave, leaving anybody out, um, the choir from my church at St. Andrews. We went Christmas caroling, we provided meals, we provided Christmas music, we visited the nursing homes. And I just, I love this town, I love the spirit of this town, and I will never leave, um, you know, the, the leadership to just governing and passing ordinances and things like that. I think you have to get out there and care for the heart of your community. You know, Will, that's what I wanted to elaborate on. That's People talk about the growth, and we all know it's growing. But there's so many things when you're on the in the field, when you're talking to people, and the things like you're talking about, that's true community. That's right. true community. Right. And you don't see that in a big city. You see stuff like that in a town. Yeah. And, and um, you know, preserving that is, is really, really important. Let me ask you a um, kind of a hard-hitting question here. What's the biggest difference between you and your opponent right now? And please talk as a, I know you're a politician. I know you got to talk to, but talk <laughs> to us, talk to us, Will. What is the biggest difference? Sure. Um, first of all, I think that um, the voters want to know how we address the issues of the town of Mount Pleasant, how we address the issues that are affecting them. And to me, the focus of my campaign the focus of the comparison between me and anybody else that runs for mayor is how have you addressed these issues? How have you shown leadership in these issues? How have you listened to the people to know what their big issues are? I think I've demonstrated that um, over, over four years. I, I was told by Walter Brown III, uh, you know, who, who lives in, in the uh, settlement community part of the old village, that uh, I'm the most approachable mayor he has ever known. I, I've demonstrated that. Um, my issue is not with my opponents. My issue is not with what they think or, or how I want them to be perceived. My issue is the issues of this town, which is keeping a control on growth, protecting our quality of life, protecting our environment, and solving our traffic issues, which we know is years long. I would be a fool and a liar if I sat here and said in four years of mayor, I fixed our traffic issues. No, I fixed some of the problems, and that was uncontrolled growth. And now we've got to fix the infrastructure and make the improvements that we need to do. And that's, Will, that's the difference. What, Will, what would be, let's, let's move forward and say you were, let's just assume you're going to be reelected. Right. What would be the number one thing you would focus on? Because now you know what the issues are because you've been mayor for four years now. And then before that, you were town council. What's the number one thing we need to take care of as a, as a community? Well, it, it, as things are at this moment, you know, on September 1st of, of 2021, we still have a life and death issue out there of, of COVID-19. Um, and so you can't take your eye off that ball because we have people on ventilators in our community right now as we speak. And because of COVID, you know, there are restrictions on family members being able to see them. That, that is tough. That really, that hurts my heart as, as the mayor of this community. Once we get through this pandemic, and we will, and we'll do it as a community, we have to keep our eye on the ball of what I, what I said in, um, in 2018, in January of 2018, after having been elected in November at my state of the town address, is we have to protect what is special about Mount Pleasant. We have to plan for the future, and that means planning roads, planning traffic, and all of that. And then we have to restore. We have to restore the sense of community. We have to restore the responsive government that listens to the people. Uh, when I first got on council, our council chambers were full of people and they were angry and they were mad and it was heated and you could feel it. When we passed our comprehensive plan last year after years of work, and which, which sets the vision for this town, how much we will grow, what we will look like, there was nobody there in opposition. And I'm very proud of that. That was a town effort. That, that wasn't me 
I am part of that movement. I'm not responsible for that movement. I'm part of it. We have shepherded that movement. We have gotten people elected to council that reflect that. So um, I, I agree in uh, Andy Stanley's principle of the path. You don't fix something once and you're done. We are on the path to preserving Mount Pleasant, to restoring you know, things like tree canopies and vegetated buffers and the things that make Mount Pleasant look like Mount Pleasant. And, and we're on the, the path of planning. We've lowered building heights. We have taken high density areas out of our comprehensive plan. And that's the path we need to stay on. And that's what I will focus on. I'm going to keep my eye on the ball that the people sent me here to do. You're right, Mr. Mayor. When be you're, before your term and you were part of that council, there was a lot of hostility in that room. And yes. there was a lot of uh, anger. Uh, from the people that would visit the chambers and stuff. And that is not that people aren't emotional and not that people uh, have their own agendas, but it's far less hostile than it was when you first became mayor. Exactly. And I appreciate that. And, and we worked on that. And, you know, we have the quote weak mayor form of government, which people who move here are, are, are shocked to find out the mayor does not run the town on a daily basis. And the staff does not report to the mayor and that type thing reports to council. We have the, the council form of government. But one thing you do um, as mayor is you pick committee heads. And, um, and I knew that GM Whitley was the right council member to shepherd the comprehensive plan through the building heights uh, changes that we did. You know, we, there are only some areas where we need 80 foot buildings in Mount Pleasant and where people have asked for variances on it for 80 feet. I voted against that. Um, but she did a great job on that. She did a great job on the comprehensive plan and, and others, uh, other appointments. That She's I've made. a good very, council member. Yes. I'm very, I'm very proud of those. And I think that that process and putting people as chairs of the committees uh, is one of the best things I've done. Congratulations on rerunning again, but I've got a very important question here. Okay. You ready? Yes. What do you like most about Mount Pleasant magazine? About the magazine? Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, oh, that's easy. You, you go so far, but it, it, it is not a style and status magazine. It could so easily be. And you look around at other places and you go, you know, it's so surfacy. There's nothing important. You get to the hearts of the matter. You get into things about how people live and how people feel and tell their story. And, you know, there's an old saying, Bill, you know, I'm a, I've been a, a commercial writer too, a professional writer. Nothing yeah, tells like yep. a story. You tell the story. And that's well, you I'm know, at. obviously being the mayor and you saying those kind words is, is, is special to my heart. You know that. But the fact is, you're part of the industry I represent. This is yeah. your craft as well. So those statements even mean more to me. Hey, thanks for being here on my pleasant podcast. And thanks for reading the magazine. And good luck in your, in your endeavor to be, once again, the mayor of Mount Pleasant. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, Mount Pleasant. Thanks for spending your time with the Mount Pleasant Magazine podcast. Your community, your podcast. Listen to past and future episodes at mountpleasantpodcast.com.